our friends over at uh, Crane & Company, this great sports show here at the Daily Wire, um, have uh, are breaking some news this morning. And it starts with Riley Gaines, who is uh, one of the uh, female collegiate swimmers who competed against Leah Thomas, who is the male swimmer pretending to be a female and was allowed to compete against women. Now, Riley Gaines is one of the few women who is, was directly impacted by this and has had the courage to speak out. Not the only one, but one of the few. And they had an interview with Riley Gaines. I think we have a, a brief uh, clip of that interview. Let's go ahead and play that. If we let it, there will be men pretending to be women that ruin women's sports. But ranking first was a person I had never heard of before. And of course, this name was Leah Thomas. Leah Thomas did, in fact, formerly swim on the men's team for three years. I thought, surely the NCAA wouldn't let this person compete with us. The NCAA official looks at me and says, great job, y'all tied, um, the trophy goes to Leah. And he said, well, for photo purposes, Leah has to have it. Wow. Leah Thomas, who used to be Will Thomas, is now dating someone that used to be a man that's now a woman and they consider themselves lesbians. Very interesting dynamic. The things they practice actively are interesting. They cut off parts of their mill parts, but left other parts. These testicles are in a jar. Stop. We were being sidelined to validate the feelings and the identity of a man. Okay, so there's uh, some of what was revealed. And uh, Jake Crane is on his uh, Twitter account has laid out a thread this morning with a lot of this information um, at jcrane underscore, if you want to go see for yourself. So I'll read a little bit from this. And this is what it says. Uh, it says, this is a thread we never expected to write. We sat down with NCAA women's swimmer Riley Gaines, and she shared some info about Leo Thomas. So we did some digging, and now we have a lot of questions. Is this what the NCAA thinks a woman is? Warning, what we found is jarring. And I, I don't know if that's an intentional pun, given some of the information we find out later, the jarring part. But uh, there's some literal jarring that has gone on, apparently. Leah Thomas appears to have two Instagram accounts. His public account, Leah K. Thomas, featuring a small handful of generic photos promoting messages like let trans kids play. Then a private account, which is Leah, basically Leah Timmis with an I rather than an O. In our research, we found the observant, um, uh, someone, uh, Nicole Walrose, the name, who identified multiple IG posts about autogynephilia that Leah Thomas, under the uh, account Leah Timmis, allegedly engaged with. AGP, autogynephilia, is a male's propensity to be sexually aroused by the thought of himself as a female. Uh, a similar image liked by Leah Timmis is still found on Instagram uh, account um, of, uh, of Gwen Weisskopf, which is Ale Leah's alleged romantic partner. Gwen, who identifies Leah as his girlfriend, is also a quote-unquote transgender woman. According to a GoFundMe for Gwen's breast augmentation, he's also an unlicensed social worker living in Philadelphia. Um, and then more information about this person. Um, lots of, some of the stuff I don't even want to read, it's so disgusting. Are Gwen and Leah in, in uh, an exclusive couple or in a polyamorous sex pod? One user called Crybaby Hell <laughs> writes, nice polycule liked by Gwen on a photo of Leah, Gwen, and two other trans people. In the post, Gwen tags a third member be a stuffed animal in bed with Leah. Uh, so then apparently there's some sort of polyamorous thing going on. Um, and later on we hear about Gwen posted a mysterious round-shaped organ-looking item in a clear ball jar. So does this mean that testicles were removed and put in a jar? I guess we're left to speculate about that. There's some Satanism stuff. Um, a lot of very disturbing images as well that they dug up. And all of this is, you know, it's posted to the internet, but it was on, a lot of the stuff is on private accounts. Some of it was on public accounts, just nobody took the time to go and find it. Now, so what's the point here? I think the point's rather obvious. Um, it's not surprising to me anyway that Leah Thomas is a depraved pervert, according to the information that they found here. That doesn't surprise me. Um, but what it reveals and, and, and rather what it, what it confirms, what any thinking person should have already known really 
is that this is all, this is a fetish, okay? This is a, this is a, 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 a fetish community, if we could even call it a community, and that's what it is. Autogynephilia, okay, is, as it says there in the thread, autogynephilia is the men who are, who are uh, thrilled by the thought of themselves as a woman, okay? They, 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 they get off on the idea of themselves being a woman, which, by the way, that is not the same thing as actually thinking that you are one. That's the important point. Now, even if Leah Thomas actually believed that he is a woman, that wouldn't at all make him a woman. And so it wouldn't change much or it shouldn't. But it becomes all the more grotesque and absurd when you consider the fact that even these people who claim to identify as women, many of them really don't. They don't even believe what they're saying about themselves. And yet we're supposed to believe it. This is a fetish. He gets a thrill out of pretending to be a woman and walking around like a woman and and going into the women's locker room. It's a thrill. It's a fetish thing. And so what we're being told is we have to participate in your fetish. Leah Thomas becomes sexually excited by the idea of other people seeing him as a woman and by competing against women in, uh, you know, in, in women's sports. It's all part of a fetish. And what the women in these sports are being told is that you, it's not even that you have to affirm his self-perception, as twisted as that would be on its own. It's actually that you must participate in this man's fetish. Okay, he gets turned on by the, by, by the idea of himself as a woman, and, and even more so if you uh, participate in that charade, and so you have to participate. Because he has a right to act out his depraved fetish um, in public and with your participation. That's what the women are being told. And as I've been saying for so long, this is the case. Like, it's impossible to know for sure of, of all the people these days who claim to be trans or whatever, it's, it's, we can't see inside their minds, so we don't know exactly what's going on. We can't say for sure. All we, all we can talk about is what is the physical reality. And so we know that they are not, they claim to be a certain thing and they're not that thing. We know that because we understand physical reality. But there's a lot of very good evidence, some of it in this thread here, that even if we could see inside their minds, um, they are they are not they're misrepresenting in public what their own perception is and for a lot of these men in particular they don't even actually see themselves as women they they know that they aren't that's the whole point of the fetish is to pretend to be something that they're not autogynephilia explains can't say what the percentage is but it's a large percentage of these trans quote unquote trans men especially, especially the, the men who, uh, quote unquote, transition later in life, even if it's when they're 19 or 20. Uh, but in particular, the cases, you know, think about someone like uh, Rachel Levine transitions as middle-aged man. This is not someone who the whole time de- had really thought of himself as a woman and perceived himself that way. This was a, a sexual fetish that he finally decided that he was going to dedicate his entire life to and, and, and also require everyone else to, to participate in that. That's what so much of this is. Now, for women, it's often a very different thing, especially adolescent uh, girls who get caught up in this. For them, it is you know, social contagion. It's, um, it is self-loathing. It's fear about their own bodies and the way that their bodies are changing. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of that. It's like um, it's a, a fear and loathing of, of who they are that's being expressed in this way. So there, there are many different kinds of motivations that lead per, a person to this conclusion of claiming to be trans. But the really important point, again, is that um, you know, we often talk about these people and say, well, they're confused. In many cases, they're not even really confused. You know, they, they understand what the reality is, but they have other motivations. And that's the case for Leah Thomas, pretty clearly.
And that'll do it for this portion of the show. Let's move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.